to put them in action. We're going to show you the different collars and leads on dogs and moving different dogs. Uh, we're going to show you how to put the collars on the dogs in the proper manner, uh, what the term uh, up and around the neck or clean out the neck, what that term means when someone tells you that if you're going to handling classes, and uh, what the proper size collar is for your dog, what's the spacing, how, how you should tell. So we'll go over some of those things in addition to some other things regarding the leashes again, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Okay, a quick review on our um, leashes. Again, we have the Resco, and the Resco comes in different colors and different widths, so you want to pick the right size and color and width for your dog. Usually you want the Resco to match the color of your dog. Um, the smaller one usually goes on toys, the um, larger one on your cockers, different dogs like that. When you're training puppies, you might also want to start with a Resco because there's no correction on a Resco. Um, it's just a soft collar to get their attention in the beginning. Um, you're going to have to advance from it to a chain at some point in time or to a nylon collar. This is a nylon version of a, of a chain. Um, so this is kind of the progression. Again, Phil discussed the Martingale, which is a chain like this that connects um, with two sides. And then we have our different choke type chains with leads. Uh, when you'll see us demo a, an Athen pincer uh, with a uh, Resco, and when you put the Resco on the dog, it's just gonna simply slide down and it's gonna stay there. So there's no room for a dog to back out of a collar like this, which kind of makes it safe for those puppies and those toy dogs. Um, unless it gets old, sometimes they wear out and they get old and then that slides a little bit, in which case you want to get a new one or maybe put a rubber band around that um, resco to reinforce it to keep it down on the dog um, behind the neck. So uh, I think the next thing we need to do is show you how to put the collars on the dogs properly and how to pick the right size collar. All that comes before moving them, so we'll see you in one sec. Okay, we have a demo dog here and let's go over how to put on some of these different uh, types of leads and collars. First, we're going to start with the Resco and I'm just randomly choosing either Resco. They work exactly the same. You're going to slide it over the dog's head get it nice and tight under the jaw, which is that term cleaning up under the chin. Um, and I'll show you that in more detail with a dog that has more hair, because it's even more important with them. But nice and tight under the chin, and you're gonna slide this down. On a resco, you typically want one finger of space in here, and that's the correct distance between the head and the uh, top of the lead. Uh, that way the dog can't back out of it at any time and uh, you won't have an accident of your dog escaping from you while you're showing it. Um, but it, the Resco, again, is very nice and easy, convenient that way. Go around your neck or wind it up like we did in our previous video, and that's the Resco. Again, sometimes these clasps get loose, and we'll put a rubber band around there just to double uh, check it, reinforce it, okay? And then to take it off, you simply slide it up, loosen it, while you're showing if you want more space in there, you can have it. But that comes with a really experienced dog, okay? So whether you're using the thicker Resco or the thinner Resco, that's how you put a Resco on. A nylon collar is gonna be the same as your chains. Um, it's just different material. It's gonna be softer on your dog. If your dog isn't liking maybe the sound of the chain or the correction of the chain, you might wanna try your nylon collar. Um, always remember, these are your show leads, and you should never use your show leads for basic obedience training or walking your dogs. They should learn the difference. When you put the show lead on, it means they're going to a dog show. 
when you're putting their obedience collar lead on or their walking lead and collar on, they should know that they have maybe a little more freedom or they have obedience rules coming. Uh, so always use a different device depending on what you're trying to do with your dog. Um, Phil calls it choose your steering wheel. Uh, the more you get to know him, you'll know he has funny terms like that. Okay, so we're gonna move on, because I'm gonna tell you the proper way of putting a choke collar on when we get to the end. Here is the um, Martingale chain, and it's the one with kind of a triangular top on it. Hopefully you can see that. And that's gonna, again, slide over the head. You're gonna make sure the bottom is nice and tight under the chin, and it closes with one finger distance here. Get this out of the way again for you. So that's a proper closure for Martingale for uh, this breed of dog. Whatever breed of dog you're using it with, you want about one finger from where the two rings close, okay? That way, the, again, the dog has no room to back up. And that's the most important thing is where the dog backs up and gets away from you, you lose control, okay? Uh, but nice and tight under the chin. I won't go over cleaning up under the chin that phrase in just a moment. So it slides right off, and we'll show you the difference of using this when you walk them. Um, this is a snake chain. Uh, lots of people like what's called a snake chain. It's the, the uh, way the links come together. The only thing that you need to be careful of with a snake chain is if your dog has a lot of hair. It could pinch the hair, and over time, when you're giving them a correction or um, tightening up the, the collar, it could start taking hair out of their coat on the side of their head or on top of their head, behind their ears. So you do want to be careful if you choose the snake chain for your dog if you have a coated breed. But again, let's show you sliding this over her head. This, this collar is too big for her. It has four, almost five fingers of space in there and she can easily back out of it if she wanted to. She could escape. See how easy it is to come out of. I wanted to show you that as well. I actually don't have the proper size um, that I would recommend for her because I train my dogs on the martingale and then I show them on the chain so they learn a bit of a difference. And by the time they're on this size of chain, I trust that they're not going to back out on me. Um, so I don't have one to show you, but basically you'd want it to close with one to two fingers of space in here, okay? That's the snake size type. Uh, the snake type of chain, and then the, the collar that I recommend for almost all breeds is your regular link collar that looks like this. Um, and I'm going to get it uh, into how you know which direction you're supposed to put on in one second. But I just want to show you sliding that one on. Again, way too much space in here for her. She can easily back out. We don't want that, okay? Um, how you know the proper size, getting a smooth box terrier to sit, I don't know why I think I can do that, but let me show you something in here. If you hold your collar up from the chain, you'll see that your lead falls down kind of like a P shape, and this is the uh, side of the P. That's the proper direction to slide over your dog's head. If you're holding the collar up and it's a reverse P or the, the side of the P is on this side, it's going the wrong way and you won't get a correction proper on your dog. Hopefully that P image sticks in your head and works. If not, the other way that I was always taught is this way. If the line of the chain is going facing towards you when you hold it up like this, it's the correct way. If it's going away from you, it's the wrong way. So you always want that top line of the chain facing towards you when you put it over the dog's head. Now remember the direction that I am with my dog right now. You can see the P and it's sliding over the dog's head. Or the top line of the chain and it's sliding over the dog's head. This means, she's so patient, isn't she? <laughs> this means 
when it's the right direction, I can give a correction and it releases. See how the lead's back hanging? That means you know you have it the right way placed on your dog. If you flip it around, if you do it the wrong way and you give a correction, it just stays tight. It doesn't slide back loose. And that doesn't help you with giving a correction when you're showing your dog. So that's incorrect. So hopefully that teaches you whether you're using a chain or a nylon, you can still see the shape of the P when it hangs. The wrong way, the right way. Thank you for being a little dumb dog. Okay, we're back with another demo dog and see the P hanging. And if I'm gonna take the P over her head and slide it on. This is how I'm gonna teach you under the chin, clean up under the chin saying, okay? So if you go to your training class and you're losing control of your dog and the uh, class instructor says, well, you need a better control, clean up under your chin. What that means is you're gonna take, you're normally holding your dog's leash with this hand and you're gonna uh, take the collar, you're gonna take this hand, the right hand, slide it under the ear, pull the coll collar forward under the chin, and then release, stop, stop. And that's cleaning up this line right here under the chin, okay? And then you would come back up here and you have that nice laying down. I'm gonna show you it again. See the collar's down here, you're running your dog around. It's down here, you have absolutely no control. You only have control when your collar is nice and clean up under the chin. The instructor says clean up under your chin. You're gonna grab the collar, try to pull it up right here. Take your right hand, slide it under the ear, forward under the jaw, back with this hand and let go with your right hand. And all that hair is nice and uh, flat laying down. You have a clean line, no uh, cheekiness, no throatiness, and then this leech can come back up. So that's the term, cleaning up under your chin, and that's where you have proper control no matter what collar and lead you're choosing for your dog. Again, this is the collar that I choose for this dog. It's the, the type of chain that doesn't get uh, her hair breaking. I don't use the snake chain for golden retrievers. When I'm showing her, I have about four, coll four fingers in here. So if you're new, I wouldn't use that much space but because she's trained, it helps me to maneuver with a little bit more space. So as you advance in your training and working with your dog, you can have a little bit more space, but your recommended space is one to two fingers in here, okay? That way that dog cannot back out and escape from you. Now, I think we're about ready to take it outside and run some dogs for you. Okay, here's our example of a thin resco, uh, which is good for toys. Um, it's also good for puppies. It's the uh, thicker one or this size is typically used on cockers and breeds like whippets. It's very good for the dogs not to back out of and escape from. It's a cloth type collar around their neck so it's soft and gentle on the smaller necked dogs. Okay, we are putting a thicker Resco on the Smooth Fox Terrier. We're going to show her with three different types of collar and leads. Here she's going down and back with the um, Resco, which again is going to be a softer um, pressure under her jaw. It's a good first round training technique with this but if they don't hold their head up and uh, when you're trying to walk with them, you're gonna need to use a chain. That's when we usually typically switch to a martingale. It's uh, a metal pressure underneath their chin, but it doesn't give them a correction of a choker collar. So the natural progression would be from a resco to this martingale for them to feel like, oh, I have a chain on me, but they're not really getting a correction for this type of chain. In a way, it's similar to a dead ring, which uh, Phil will be going over shortly. 
the difference between uh, a martingale and a dead ring is that the martingale they cannot back out of and a dead ring they can. Now we're switching to a choker chain lead. If the dog was still trying to put the head down while walking, this is going to give you the ability to do a correction to keep the head up. So it's kind of a pop and release with a choker chain. You don't want to keep it tight on them, but a pop and release of a reminder to keep their head up. And when you use these three different types, you want to feel what work, works best for you and what feels best for the dog. She actually worked well on all three. Okay, on this demo dog, we're using just the uh, choker type chain, and we're going to... Um, to show you the difference of moving on top versus on the side. This is on top movement. You have a little bit more control. You're still guiding the dog on which direction. Um, I'm going to demo putting it on the dog again. Cleaning up under the chin and winding up your leash. Again, you're on top and you have a little bit more control in moving. We will be getting into free baiting soon, so don't worry about that. Now I'm putting the collar under the ear. The dog has a little bit more freedom under the ear, but like my husband says, it's a good trick if your dog knows it. It allows them to carry their head on their own. And some dogs prefer it and use it well, and other dogs, it just doesn't work right for them. Okay, my turn here. Here we're using a dog that's uh, not quite as trained as some of the others. We're beginning here with a regular chain, leash off the top, pretty conventional. This is a real high energy dog. So sometimes you're going to try different things for, for different activity levels. Now you're going to see the lead under the chin. As we spoke before, it's a great trick if the dog knows it. But some dogs can't utilize that freedom right away. So it's something you, you progress to. And then also, as Amy has said, you have less control. Now here's a good example of the dog not particularly caring for the lead under the chin. <laughs> also, you're going to remember with some breeds, they're easily distracted. So when training, you're going to want to be aware of that. Here we are on the dead ring. Um, you're clipping. It's a conventional chain. You clip it across the top. You can see there. Um, so it cannot uh, get tight like a conventional chain would. Although, like Amy has said, easily backed out. But in this leash, it's, it's somewhat my favorites once they're trained because it gives you options of what you can do. I could take that chain and put it back to a, a regular conventional chain and then do it underneath on top. A um, lot, lot, lot more versatile in this situation. This dog here appears to like that thing much or it's just got tired from all the movement so far. And now we're working with a, a larger dog, young dog that's completely untrained, beginning its, its uh, career. And you're going to see leash off the top, on the side, different methods, um, and bringing out toys or cookies. I think you'll see a progression of improvement through the video here. This is just an attempt to show you what's going on. Also, we'll see that uh, some dogs innately sit, and if it's very important that we work with that, uh, the owners and breeders do, so a handler has a little less work in the beginning. But it's not insurmountable. You're going to see here the dog um, not too comfortable with some things, more comfortable with others. But as I said before, uh, this should show a progression of training from the, basically the very beginning. You can see as, as I train her, we want the dog to be happy. You want it to be, it doesn't have to move perfectly or exactly the way you would want in the end, but you just want the dog to be happy and, and progressing with uh, each attempt you make to do something different. Thank you again for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed these demos today. I hope that it's all starting to click. 
collars and leads and the next step of what you're going to do. Um, we are going to slowly progress like this in training and hopefully get to a point where we can get to more advanced steps um, down the road. Um, if you're liking these videos, please show us your support. It means a lot in the YouTube world. If you like the video, subscribe to our channel. Uh, ring the bell so you're notified anytime we upload uh, new content. And share this channel with your friends. Thank you again for joining us and we'll see you soon.